The following program contains mature content matter. Listener discretion is advised. Since the dawn of time, the world has been plagued by demons and monsters, cloaked by the night and shadows. However, humanity found out about these creatures and sent out brave men and women to defend their homelands. These are the tales of the Monster Hunters. Pronto! Tio, it is Bautista. Hey, Bautista, como si? Oh, dove sei? Where are you? I'm at the airport in Argentina, Tio. What are you doing there? I'm coming back to Tuxedo City, Tio. Ma, I thought that you were a track indicamento. I was. Don't tell me they know you're tracking them, eh? I had managed to get inside the Camento posing as a courier and got as far as the main floor. After that, I had to figure out a way I could get up to the second floor, which I knew would be more difficult to access. But after a few days, I had come up with something and went back to put my plan into motion. But when I arrived there, I was not prepared for what happened. What was that? The Camento was gone. Eh? What do you mean they're gone? There were policemen in front of the doors that were locked up, and dozens of employees who obviously had no idea that this was going to happen. Ma, do you know where they went? No, Tio. Maybe they leave something behind you can use against them, eh? If there it is gone now, the headquarters was too well guarded when I went back. Two days later, they leveled the entire facility. Buttana miseria! Son of my bitches are smart! Leave nothing behind to chance! Correct. Okay, you come back. When you get back, you can stay with the twins as long as you want. Okay, Tio. See you soon. Meanwhile, across town inside the basement apartment of Bruno and Pat Domenico, Bruno and Christy are cuddled up on the couch watching TV. The door at the top of the stairs opens, and then Pat walks downstairs into the living room. Guess what, Bruno? The blue fairy finally visited your blow-up doll, turned her into a real woman. <laughs> You're so funny, Richard Godfrey. Don't be mad with me, Pat. You knew once she became a real woman, you wouldn't be able to satisfy her, and she'd leave you. Ugh. Why do you have to upset your brother? Were you not listening? He was already upset with the blue fairy for granting Heidi's wish. Huh? Who's Heidi? The name of his blow-up doll. Are you done? I have a date tonight. What? With who? Christy immediately turns to look at Bruno. I swear to God, Bruno, if you say his blow-up doll, you're sleeping alone tonight. Don't be silly, Miss G-String. Now that Heidi's a real woman, she shouldn't be caught dead in public with him. I'm going out with Brooke, not that it's any of your business. Brooke? Has employees assistant Brooke? Yes. Guess her level of intelligence ends with comic books. So, where are you two gonna go? Well, if you must know, we're going over to the Silver Screen Oasis to watch the special screening of the uh, Wizard of Oz. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what? I don't think that's a good idea. Ugh, why not? What if they encountered a real wizard and he grants Burke her wish of having a brain? If that happens, she'll have common sense, and anyone with common sense will not be out with Pat. Pat refrains from his next comment, and then storms away. Oh, Bruno, you know what I don't get? Why you have to be so mean? What's the matter with you? Forget about him, he's fine. Let's focus on me while you give me a little preview of what's to come later. You want to know what is to come later? <laughs> you and only the G-string I bought you? I'm going home, Bruno. What? You can't do that! Actually, I can. And I am. Well, this is great. What a terrible thing to happen to me. Oh, and Bruno? There's one more thing. There's more? I'm not even wearing any underwear. Wait! Why, huh? Why, Bruno? Don't go, baby. I'll be sad if you leave me alone tonight. Bruno now wraps his arms around Christy and begins to run his hands down her back. Oh my god, Bruno! Are you trying to feel the inside of the back of my jeans to see if I'm wearing any underwear? Well, I'm not searching for buried treasure. Christy pulls away from Bruno. 
You know what? That's it. You are gonna apologize. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's go to my room. No, not to me. To Pat. What? Why? Pat, come on out here. What are you doing? Getting your brother so you can apologize. I'm not apologizing. You either apologize or else you'll be keeping yourself warm tonight. What is it, Christy? Your brother has something to say. I do? Christy suddenly pinches Bruno. Oh! Well, what is it? I need to get ready. What? I'm sorry. What's wrong with him? Is he having a stroke? What Mumbles is trying to say is that he's sorry. Only because you made me. He is? And he would like it very much if himself and I could join you in Brook tonight. No, I wouldn't. Ow! Well, uh, this is unexpected. You're telling me. Ow! <sighs> okay, I'll let Brooke know. The movie doesn't start until 7.30. Great. We'll both get ready. Oh, why do we need to go and watch a stupid movie? Why can't we just stay home and watch my favorite movie? Bruno has his way with Christy. Because tonight, we're going to watch a new movie. Bruno does not get his way. Nice title, isn't it? I fucking hate sequels. Not too long after, Bruno and Christy are seen standing in the lobby of the Silver Screen Oasis. Could you not have worn something nicer than the soccer jersey, Bruno? Number one, never rip on my Tuxedo City Pioneers shirt. Number two, we are going to watch The Wizard of Oz. If we were going to meet an actual wizard, I would have worn something nicer like an autographed Killian Webb jersey. Christy and Bruno both turn to see Scarlet walking towards them hand in hand with Amelia. Christy! <sighs> Bruno, what brings you two here? Her. Oh my god, I didn't even know you two were a couple. I'm so happy for you. Oh, thank you, Christy. Does your girlfriend have a name, Scarlet? Amelia. How you doing? I'm Bruno Domenico. Bruno Domenico? As in Joe Domenico's grandson? You know my grandfather? What hunter doesn't know him? You're a hunter? Look at who is around you, Bruno. We're all hunters. Christy, you're a hunter? Uh, y yes. And you didn't think to share this with me? I'm pretty sure you put two and two together when you saw my mark. It's right above my- Okay, okay, way too much information. She didn't tell you. Carry on. Well, looks like the whole gang's here. Pat, this is my girlfriend, Amelia. Pleasure. This is Brooke. Hello. You're Joe's other grandson? You mean Joe is my grandfather? No. She means Joel the astronaut. Oh! Yes. Before you hurt yourself, Amelia, Scarlet, and Christy are all hunters. What? Um, Pat? Yes? I guess this would be a good time, Miss Sani, to let you know that I am a hunter as well. <laughs> really? Uh-huh. Well, shit. Small world, huh, Bruno? Yeah, like your brain. Ugh, such a dick. Well, well, look at that, Christy. On their first date, Brooke told Pat she was a hunter. What do you know? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, okay? I, I really am. Good job, Bruno. I'm sure she feels bad for not telling you, Bruno. Okay, let's not make this night about him, please. We're here to see the Wizard of Oz, who, if we're lucky, has a brain for my brother. <laughs> that chance? Unbelievable! Come on, Amelia. Daddy needs some popcorn. Where are you going? I said I'm going to get popcorn. Do I really need to explain where I'm going to get it? How can you eat at a time like this? Duh, because I am hungry. Don't you think you should go and talk to Christy? She's in the ladies' can. I can't go in there. Maybe you wait outside until she comes out? Oh, then I'll miss some of the movie. But you don't even want to be here to begin with. True, but I paid $20 for tickets to see only some of the movie. How can you be so selfish? Oh yeah, I'm selfish. I'm not the didn't tell me she was a hunter. Did you tell her you were a hunter? For obvious reasons, I didn't. Then she probably had her reasons. Not likely. She should have told me once she saw my mark by my- Bruno! So 
So you think she has a reason? I would think by now that you would know that thinking is not one of his better traits. Christy, come out here, please. I don't want to talk to you while you're inside the stall. Oh, Bruno is quite a guy, isn't he? Sure, all pretty boys are. If she saw the hunter's mark, why didn't she just tell him? Are you taking that narcissist side? All I'm saying is that we should not be so quick to judge. It's all. Let's just wait to see what she has to say before you pass judgment, shall we? You know, if she does not come out any soon, me and you could go into one of those stalls and have some... fun. Amelia, get a grip on yourself. We aren't here for that. Sorry. That is not to say if no one's in the back row around us, we can't have some fun. Oh, honey. Why are you crying? I... I upset Bruno. He's a narcissist boy toy. He'll get over it. <sighs> Maybe I should have just told him. What? No. No, no, no. You're not gonna take the blame because he's being a dick. I... I should have just told him when I saw his hunter's mark. I am in no way taking that swine's side, but... Why didn't you tell him? Because I thought he would think less of me since I'm inside the command center and not out on the field hunting. Oh, Christy. Do you ever think he may just be happy that you are not out in the field in a harm's way? Is he even capable of thinking of others and not just himself? Scarlet. You... you really think that, Amelia? Only one way to find out. I sure hope you're not setting her up to be disappointed. Amelia and Scarlet watch while Christy washes her face before the three of them exit the washroom and they see Bruno standing there eating popcorn. Three hot women walk out of a bathroom. <laughs> sexy. How about I show you sexy, you narcissist? Come along, Scarlet. We'll see you two inside. Just don't sit in the back row! Popcorn? There's M&Ms in it. Just how you like it. You, you're not mad at me? <sighs> Just confused, really. <sighs> Listen, Bruno, the reason I never told you is because... It's because I thought you would think less of me. Why would I think less of you? Because I'm not out hunting in the field. I'm inside the command center. Command center? The hell are you talking about? Christy frowns and then begins to tell Bruno everything about Dick's and Logistics and the Hunter's Network. Holy shit! This whole time that warehouse has been employing hunters? Wow! Who would have thought it? I'm sorry, Bruno. I should have told you all of this earlier. Don't be sorry. You're better off in the HQ and not hunting. <laughs> but at least I know if we're out somewhere where you come across a situation, you'll be able to fight. And it won't bother you if I'm a better hunter than you. <laughs> All right, okay. Settle down. Now you're just fixing to start another fight. Bruno and Christy begin to walk towards the auditorium. As they pass by the concession, they don't notice the two red tracksuit vampires. Holy hell. What is it? That's Bruno Domenico. Bruno Domenico? As in Joe Domenico's grandson, Bruno? The one in the same. Well, what are you thinking, Vance? I can see that look in your eyes. I'm thinking he and his brother have not answered for killing our kind in their pizzeria. It's been over eight months. We should let it go. Uh, we can't do that, Hank. It sends a bad message. And the message is getting worse since it's been so long. And they're both still breathing. Have you forgotten who their grandfather is? They don't call him the wolf killer for no reason. When he starts being called the vampire killer, I'll worry about it. Until then, we're gonna take Bruno out. And then go and find his idiot brother and kill him too. Killing Bruno will put us on Joe's radar in a bad way. You really wanna do that? The man is in his 80s. I'm sure we'll be fine. I don't know, Vance. You back out on me. I'll tell the master what you did, and he will bleed you dry. Inside the auditorium, Scarlet looks on disheartedly as Bruno and Christy sit next to herself and Amelia, while Brooke and Pat are sitting on her opposite side. I guess there wasn't 144 other seats to choose from. 
I really love this film, Bruno. I really love what's to come after the film. Oh, yuck. Are they going to make out for the entire movie? I guess Bruno and Christy have made up. <sighs> Which means there's going to be makeup sex when he gets home. I'm happy they made up. I hated to see Christy sad. If I have to listen to them for the next hour and 52 minutes, I'm going to be sad. Uh-oh. Uh-oh what? Popcorn's almost gone. I'm going to go get a refill. Well, want me to come with you? No, you stay here and keep warm for me. Oh, does this guy ever stop? Just ignore him. Let's switch seats and you tell me how easy that is. Pat, I'm going to get another soda. I'll go. You stay here. What about the movie? I'll be back before it starts. Pat walks out of the auditorium and immediately sees Bruno walking back towards him. Ah, crap! I presume you were the brother? Yep, never met this guy before a day in my life. Sorry to have troubled you. You idiot, that is the brother. Vance, we shouldn't do this. I'm with him, Vance. You will both pay for the two vampires you killed in your pizzeria. If we're being honest here, Bruno did kill both of them. You asshole! You put the garlic sauce in the pizza, then iced the first one. You told me to do that! Yeah, but you didn't have to listen to me. And you didn't have to stake the other vampire in his- Enough! Yeah, Pat, stop your bitching. Both of you, inside, now! Reluctantly, Bruno and Pat begin to walk towards the door of the auditorium, and then inside. Oh, how sweet this is going to be. Me being the one to end the grandson of Joe Domenico? Um, Vance? I swear, Hank, if you were trying to talk me out of this again, so help me, I'm going to- No, Vance, look! Red tracksuit Vance looks towards the back of the theater to where Hank is pointing and sees Amelia, Christy, Brooke, and Scarlet, who have gotten to their feet. So? Big deal! I'm pretty sure we're in no danger from any of them. <laughs> I don't think you're in any position to be laughing, Bruno. If this wasn't so funny, he wouldn't be. With her focus on Pat, Vance does not see Brooke coming up from the other side of the seats. Amelia, Scarlet, and Christy have begun to rush towards Vance, who sees Brooke too late, while Hank looks on in shock. What the hell? Hell is too good for you! Brooke moves quickly behind Vance, while grabbing his arms and pinning them behind him. Vance struggles to break free and sees Amelia and Scarlet coming towards him, who both take a side and push him on his shoulders, while Christy stops in front of him. Looks like you picked the wrong night to go down the yellow brick road. Christy reveals a stake and drives it directly into Vance's heart. Amelia and Scarlet step back as Vance begins to scream. Ah! Just as Brooke grabs him by the back of his hair, spins him around, and pushes him forward. Holy crap! Grab him! No, leave him be. What? Why? He didn't want to hurt us, did you? Hank. My, my, my name is Hank. But he's a vampire. He's no threat, so we don't kill him. Are you serious? Get out of here, Hank. The, thank you, Domenico brothers. I, I will not forget this. Um, guys? What are we going to do about the dead vampire? <sighs> Let me worry about that. Who is she calling? Clean up. Clean up? Or what the hell is clean up? That's a little above your pay grade, Bruno. Whatever. Chris, you will tell me, won't you? If she values her job, she won't. Sorry, Bruno. Fine, I don't care. Let's go get some pancakes and put all this bullshit behind us. You seriously want to go eat after what just happened? Why wouldn't I? The vamp is dead, and I'm hungry. I can't believe this guy. Seeing is believing. So, Brooke, you want to go get some pancakes? I could eat. Where are they all going? To get pancakes. Pancakes? Seriously? Never mind them. What did Rashford say? They're at another location not far from here and we'll be here as soon as they can. So we wait then? Yes. Scarlet glances toward the screen. You know, 
We do have the theater all alone. Yes, we do. And I did promise you we would have some fun. <laughs> yes, you did. Then what are we waiting for? After you, my dear. Why, thank you, Dorothy. Tales of the Monster Hunters Night at the Oasis. This issue was voiced by Enzo Ferrara as Joe and Pat. Antonio Ferrara as Bruno. Ashley Tyler as Scarlet. Val Cha as Brooke. Pablo Lopez as Bautista. Brandon Gamblin as Hank. Raven Batonio as Christy. Anna Gassica as Amelia. Val Cha as Brooke. And Brock Overbay as Vance. Narrated by Sage Crossley. Music by Alexander Ferrara and Kevin McLeod. Audio engineering by Alexander Ferrara. Created by Antonio and Enzo Ferrara. Directed and produced by Antonio and Enzo Ferrara. Cover art by Enzo Ferrara. Edited and written by Antonio Ferrara. Creative consultant Paul Cairns. Coming on Tuesday, October 31st, 2023. Tales of the Monster Hunters Halloween Special. This presentation of Tales of the Monster Hunters podcast has been brought to you by Giant Monster Productions. Copyright 2023. To contact Giant Monster Productions, email them at giantmonsterprod at hotmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at Giant Monster Pro, Instagram at Tales of the Monster Hunters, and on Facebook and YouTube. If you have enjoyed this podcast and want to hear more, please subscribe, like, and favorite so you never miss an episode. Thank you for listening.